So today we're standing outside Ed Burst 14 Ward office, and what we're here to do is we're here to send a message that the Chicago police, their sworn duty is to serve and protect. When we say serve and protect, that doesn't mean that we unleash officers who are not trained with semi-automatic weapons. And we know that in the theory of the aldermen, including Ed Burke, who are pushing for CPD to have automatic weapons, we're saying that right now, there's such a huge disconnect. We have to bridge the disconnect between the community and the police department. That's the first rule of business. And whatever happened to the Department of Justice consent decree, even though it might not be pushed on a federal basis from the Department of Justice, we still want Chicago police to abide by that consent decree. We still want you to follow that because guess what? The public is not satisfied. There's a problem and we need that problem corrected. So let's think about it and we'll take it from there. What we want to do is we want to say no police with semi-automatic weapons. I just said quick. See you, Hardeman here, President of Vice and Weapons Incorporated. The reason we're standing out here in unity once again, my people, is because there is no war against the police. There's no need to arm police officers in Chicago with semi-automatic weapons because there's no evidence or no data to back up the fact that the police are under attack. The Chicago Police Department and the Department of Justice investigation were uh, cited to be one of the most corrupt police departments in the United States. So what, once again, here we are in the year 2017, talking about arming a corrupt police department to go out and kill African-American men whenever they get ready to. It's time time out for that type of practice here in Chicago and across the nation. That's why we're standing in opposition to this here uh, thought. It's just a thought for right now to arm police with assault weapons. We say no to that because if you think about it, over 100 years, African-American men in particular have been killed by members of the Chicago Police Department. We have to stop this nonsense. So this is not about just what's happened over the last two years. We're talking about 100 years of murder. And anybody that wants to play with those numbers, that's their thing there. But we're not, we're not going for it. We are here today standing unified, bottom line. Okay, so you may want to do your press conference over again. That's good, just keep it simple for another press conference. Eric, you're going to lead it. Everybody's got to kind of, you know, hit it and quit it, though, now. He wants to why he said that. Yeah, you got to get him, yeah. Uh, my name is Mark right. Clements. I got it. Right. Here, come on, come on, here. It's live, so make sure you get the Ed Burke off this right here. There you go. My name is Mark Clements, and um, I am here uh, in front of uh, the Ultimate Ed Burke's office. And you know, my position about all of this is where is the semi automatic weapons coming from? And you know, today, earlier during uh, the first news conference, uh, I raised the question as to if these weapons are coming from a warehouse in which the Chicago Police Department uh, purchased guns as much as uh, I would say six years ago and stored them into warehouses. And I think that. The serial numbers and the backgrounds of those guns need to be checked. Thank you. My point is the investigation, you know, the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean nothing to them, okay? Right. So I'm kick it off again. Just people, she just need to be on point. That's all. Mm -hmm. None of us perfect. How you doing, bro? Right. Everything good, man. That's right. That's right. You know, you know how we do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you tired of messing with mine. You said, oh, I'm getting my own. My sister called me. She's the night I will not see the call. Girl, I'm busy now. Ah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, yeah. she, she didn't put out. Uh, yeah, you got to get it. 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 Angel did it. That's right. Angel did it. She put her hand across there. It wasn't me. <laughs> I got to mess with you. Okay, you're going to start another one. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's no numbers or evidence to back that up. Yeah. They will use an isolated incident to kind of like, you know, push their agenda. Sure. Uh, you sure. know, the Department of Justice investigation is getting like this the most corrupt yeah. yeah. Especially coming out of the community. Yeah. 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 The NRA is just too powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. It's high power. Right. Right. So we're going to just do a quick press conference, right. okay? Okay. So Eric, you're going to kick it off, right? And then we'll take it from everybody's ability. Okay, I'm going to do the accuracy of the report. Good afternoon, my name is Eric Russell, uh, E-R-I-C-R-U-S-S-E-L-L, -L, President of the Police, uh, President of the Tree of Life Justice League of Illinois, Police Accountability Act. Uh, we're standing here in solidarity with the, uh, Mr. Tio Hardiman, Mr. Mark Clemens, and uh, Pastor Greg here, and a host of other uh, uh, We're just horrified and we're voicing our opposition uh, to the automatic proposal that the Chicago Police be armed with uh, assault rifles. Uh, this just absolutely horrifies our community because the Chicago police, they haven't even mastered the art of respectful engagement of black and brown people. And so our main concern here is that uh, with the Department of Justice not being a consent decree uh, as relates to reform and transparency, there's already targets on black and brown people's back. And uh, the idea of the Chicago police being armed with assault rifles, uh, the prevailing uh, opinion of our community is that they have a desire to be more proficient killers and to continue to kill us with impunity. And that's a problem for us. And so we're just standing in solidarity, forcing our opposition to the Chicago police My name is Mark Clements, M-A-R-K Clements, C-L-E-M-E-N-T-S, and I'll be as brief as possible. Where is these automatic uh, so-called rifles coming from? And I think that we must uh, really uh, examine this very carefully. You know, we have had, what, two or three incidents, and now the Chicago Police Department is now saying that uh, they should be armed with uh, assault rifles. Well, I have a problem with that. Uh, as it has been reported upon, is that many of these weapons are being obtained from the railroad tracks. So if they know that they are being obtained from the railroad track, it would appear that the police would put extra security in those particular uh, areas. Uh, so that is basically my concern is that the serial numbers need to be ran on these weapons and that information needs to be released to the public. Thank you. Tio Hardiman, President of the Police Department. We stand here in front of um, we stand here in front of Alderman Ed Burke's office because he's proposing that Chicago Police Department personnel be equipped with semi-automatic weapons. What we're saying is that obviously Alderman Ed Burke did not read the investigation. There's no law against Chicago Police Officers here for any time. Not just we can get a review of this domestic incidents. We have a history of corruption with certain members of the no, we oppose this all the way. And we plan to raise up hundreds of people to really stand against this particular, you know, like ordinance or any type of proposition that the Ottoman and the other Ottoman are making right now. Because once again, for the record, there's no war against Chicago police officers. Every now and then you have an isolated incident. I'm not anti-police. We're anti-excessive force and anti-police brutality. Everybody deserves to go home at night. But at the same time, there's been over 40, 50 years of police officers killing African-American men in particular, 
and they, they get away with it all the time. And most recently, uh, Laquan McDonald shot 16 times. The young man's body was on fire. Imagine Laquan being shot with a semi-automatic weapon. His, his body probably would have burnt up right on the streets. We say no. That's why we're standing here today. Brother Pastor Greer. Ray Greer, President of Freedom First International, Southern Christian Leadership Conference. We're here because we are standing in solidarity with members of the community and these, this group of organizations. And we're saying that the community, there is a community issue here and a disconnect between the Chicago Police Department, City Hall, and the community. And that disconnect says that last year there was historically high community violence numbers. These aldermen want a, a capacity ordinance in the Chicago Police that says that they need that. We're saying that we need to look at the gun violence issue and we need to build a bridge between the community and the police. That should be the first rule of business. That should be the dialogue with these older people. We want the mayor to weigh, it, weigh in on this. We want the city council to weigh in on this. We want our, the rest of the city council, we want Andy Johnson to weigh in on this because as we know, the Department of Justice reports us that there's a consecutive pattern of, of discrimination and abuse against minorities in the community. So who, who gets the big guns? They get the big guns, we get the big guns, it just never stops. We don't want that kind of contact. What we want is we want a, a true serve and protect initiative. If Alderman Edberg wants to pass an initiative, let's pass a bridge to community and public initiative. Let's talk about those kind of things before you don't take the tip first. Eric, you saw that, that video. Uh, what's your um, what's your response to seeing that that kind of firepower is on the streets? What, what you think of gang members now having? Well, assault. like Mr. Hardiman says, uh, uh, there are certainly uh, isolated incidents. Um, we want to head off a bloody summer. We don't deny that uh, there are automatic weapons on the streets of Chicago. But in order to problem solve, we must uh, we must defend this on the front. Uh, like Mark uh, said, uh, just like they flooded our community. solving 24% of the gun violence crime associated with black and brown victims. Where are these guns? Let's, uh, let's see them on the table. Let's see the uh, detectives being proactive and uh, prevent these guns from our community. Uh, we're just not buying the uh, idea that the police are bringing knives to a gunfight. You want to get a shot of me real quick? Catch that footage, and then in his caption, he can say we're trying to set up a meeting with Burke. I know. Maybe in your caption, you're gonna walk back in here one more time, like we're going in and trying to get a meeting. Okay. So we're just gonna go back in for the. I can't go. You can't go back. We're gonna go back in for the.